so I'm going to explain why this happens and why you need to use a new ish feature in Prusa Slicer and Orca to automatically make it almost unbreakable. Let's go. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. What you're looking at here is something called interlocking. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's explore the problem that this addresses in the first place. Multi-material 3D printing has, since the very start, had a compatibility problem. That is a multi-material interface compatibility problem. And a lot of you have recently been experiencing it firsthand inadvertently. I've noticed after some people's advice, including my own, to use PETG support with prints made out of PLA. While it turns out that you can use PETG's aversion to sticking to PLA as a powerful removable support method, it often fails for the very same reason. It really doesn't stick at all. What we have here are materials that are not chemically compatible, meaning that heating them up together doesn't cause them in any way to bond. I guess we could call this unfused deposition modelling. The workaround was to design in features that mechanically bond together parts of multi-material prints. So we're talking about design time in the CAD, and that's fine if you're happy to do that and you are actually using your own designs. So what's the downside to that and why do we need to fix it in the first place? Well. It's twofold, I guess. These features have to be designed independently of the FDM printer's specifications because you're doing them in the CAD before you even know what 3D printer you're printing them on, especially if you're sharing them online. And as a consequence, you ultimately have to create features that are larger and more cumbersome, and this can also mean taking up more space on the model. They're also therefore quite likely to be weaker than the ones that can be integrated in at slice time, as we'll hopefully see in a minute. The second reason is because a lot of people are using models that they haven't designed or even are painting on multi-material and a slicer and that doesn't give you any of that kind of control. You can't really design in features that lock parts together or not really without a lot of effort in the slicer. And that is where interlocking comes in. Now let's have a brief history lesson before we get into it. Interlocking the slicer functionality first appeared in Cura where it's been since 2023 when I made this rather underappreciated tentacle to show it off. The actual idea though, that came from a paper in 2022 named Interlaced Topologically Interlocking Lattice for Continuous Dual Material Extrusion. For an academic paper, that's actually a pretty brief title. Finally though, we actually have this functionality in all the major slicers because Orca Slicer integrated it recently. I mentioned that briefly at the time in the Bamboo AMS TPU video, but now Prusa Slicer has also ported it over from Orca Slicer, so I thought we really needed to get more eyes on this in 2025. Of course, it should be emphasized that Cura did pioneer this, but the thing is that the multi-material printers that I have here are all set up in Prusa Slicer variants, so the bulk of the demonstrations I'm going to show you today are going to be in Prusa Slicer. I wanted to be particularly clear about that, and also that it works almost identically in all three slicers anyway. Let's get into the theory. This block is what the paper calls a unit cell of an ITIL structure. We already covered ITIL, it's the abbreviation of the title of the paper. It's the long name for interlocking. The unit cells can come in two variants and hopefully I'll be able to show you that they are ultimately topologically the same. Or at least I've convinced myself of that. The other variant is the diagonal cell but we'll stick to the straight ones for now because, well, I've printed a fair few of them. The idea is that you repeat these cells along the interface boundary between two incompatible materials. Same pattern over and over, one end to the other. What I want to point out first about doing this is that when you put two of these cells next to each other, it creates, hopefully you can see this, a something that you would call a topological link, where the actual material is making a full link around the other material, if that makes sense. This is where I want to show you the diagonal variant again. There's half a cell of the diagonal variant here, and if you join two of these together and print this, which I might add was a non-trivial process because I had to break out the PVA dissolvable filament to make that work, and that was done on the Prusa XL, what you get out of this is a structure like this. If this isn't obviously a link to you, then maybe this one where I rounded the corners and did it again is more obvious. As far as I'm concerned, it's pretty much a chain link, and the paper is inclined to agree by using pretty much the same wording. It doesn't really matter in the end which version of interlocking you're using. Continuing this pattern laterally along a seam is going to ultimately get you this chainmail style of connection, and I hope that you can see that. But this is also where the magic happens. You can continue this layer upon layer upwards in the Z direction. Hopefully at this point you're starting to see that this is probably going to create connections that are not going to break at significantly lower 
loads than the materials themselves. You will have to literally break these individual chain links, and there are a lot of them. This is about as much removed from just overlapping layers a bit as you can get, really. I thought since I had some dissolvable PVA filament, we could print half of a real interlocked boundary in PVA and half in PLA, and then soak it in water to get rid of the PVA part. While that's soaking, let's talk about the sponsor PCBWay. Not literally while it's soaking, that's already happened obviously, it took hours, and we'll cover that and the why in a future video on PVA. PCB manufacture is kind of like this actually, where you have to stick it in a liquid to dissolve part of it, but instead of water you have some really unpleasant chemicals that you do not want in your house, you don't want to touch them, which is why it's actually great that we live in 2025 when PCB way exists and not 1995 when you had to make these yourself as a hobbyist. Seriously, I was there and it was not fun, in fact I actually refused to do it because I didn't want to deal with the chemicals involved. Nowadays though, all you have to do to make a PCB is use PCB design software, make your schematic, generate your gerber files, and upload them straight to the quick order page on PCBWay's website. And that's that. You can even order as few as five boards, and that's what makes PCB manufacture so much more accessible to hobbyists instead of having to order hundreds or thousands at a time, which you would have had to do just a few years ago. PCBWay can also manufacture things for you out of most regular engineering materials using processes like CNC milling, FDM, resin, sheet metal bending, and vacuum forming if you want to. All of this is on their website, which is linked in the description, and there's help articles and tips for people who aren't experienced in these things, like me, so go check them out. Also, I've included a new user coupon, so look out for that in the description. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring the video, and hopefully that PVA is melted by now. Spoiler, it's not. Apparently not all PVAs are the same, we'll cover that in a later video. Applications of interlocking are not hard to imagine, and I've given some in the previous video I did on it, and I have a thing for this video. I decided to design a box hinge out of TPU for a box made out of PLA, but I got somewhat carried away. I ended up with an entirely parametric box and hinge, so you can customise completely the hinge size and the box size, and I think at least this is really useful.
what I'll do is I'll probably share a few shapes and sizes on printables and I'll put the source uh, Fusion 360 file on Patreon for anyone who wants to create their own. And the design is quite simple at the moment. It works, but it could be improved. If there's a great deal of interest, I'll put some more effort into doing that. Maybe also include things like compartments um, would be quite cool. And as a side note, that idea again grew even more and it's going to become a video of its own. I thought, what about if you can't print two materials? What about if you only have a single colour or single material, single nozzle printer? This is, of course, entirely irrelevant to anything in this video, but that's how it works sometimes. I decided to try and design a living hinge that you can print in midair so that you can print a box, uh, print in place in a similar way to the one I've just shown you. And yeah, this is a thing now. I'll do the same, uh, share this on printables and a few sizes. This though, this is insanely experimental. The hinge will snap sometimes, especially some PLAs snap and others don't. I don't entirely understand why yet. It's probably to do with brittleness, obviously. But yeah, different, different materials. Even PETG behaves differently depending on which PETG you use. Polycarbonate seems quite reliable, but I've only got one type of polycarbonate. I'm going to be looking into nylon and maybe polypropylene. We'll see. It's fascinating, but that's a topic for another video. Make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more about that. So back to material interlocking. To use it, all you have to do is have a multi-part object or paint an object or merge two objects together. You, you can't do it by just putting two objects down on the build plate next to each other. You have to actually merge them into a single entity. It just seems to be the way that Prusa Slicer works or that's my understanding. Then you need to turn on what Prusa and Orca have called beam interlocking. I think Cura just calls it material interlocking. The parameters that you get are pretty simple and hopefully now you have a good understanding of how these all work. Although in most cases the defaults work fine. The only thing I've really had to change is the angles sometimes. If you've got a thinner part you have to make a more acute angle so that you get enough material interlocking like full cells if that makes sense. As a summary I personally think that interlocking is probably one of the biggest advancements in multi-material slicing and possibly even in FDM generally in the last few years and it makes printing with incompatible materials a lot more accessible to users and a lot more reliable and let's face it the idea of printing multi-material with incompatible materials, it kind of covers most materials. I personally struggle to think of two materials that do bond together well, other than maybe my smooth PEI sheet and one particular brand of PVA. But that's a story for another time. Thank you for watching.